Hi everyone, welcome back to Tech Booth. Today, a beginner's guide to SD cards. When choosing an SD card for your needs, you need to consider three main things. The first one is the physical format. The second one is the capacity of the card. And the third one is the speed of the card. The types of SD cards that we're going to be talking about come in three main formats. That is the standard size that we're all familiar with. And you also are familiar with the micro SD card that goes into your phone, into action cameras, into drones and other devices. But there's also a middle one called the mini SD card, a size in between, that didn't really become popular and no one really uses that size anymore. So when we're talking about SD cards, we're going to be looking at the standard SD card and the micro SD card. In terms of technology, the standard and the micro SD card are more or less the same thing. And you can use a micro SD card with an adapter in any or most devices that use standard SD cards. So the information we're going to be talking about in terms of which card to choose will apply both to the standard and to the micro SD card. The next thing you want to consider when buying an SD card is obviously the capacity. When SD cards first came out, the maximum capacity you could have on an SD card was two gigabytes. And that was limited by the file format that the system used. There are now four types of SD cards that we're going to be talking about in this video. There is the original SD card and SD stands for Secure Digital. After the SD card came out, there was the SDHC, which stands for Secure Digital High Capacity. After the SDHC, we have the SDXC, Extended Capacity. And then finally, we have UC cards. These are ultra capacity express cards that are in development. I talked about the limitation in capacity of the original SD cards being two gigabytes because of the file format. Now, since the file formats have changed over the years as the SD card has developed, the capacity or the maximum capacity of the cards has also increased. So from two gigabytes on the original SD card, we moved up to a maximum capacity of 32 gigabytes on the SDHC cards. And then you have the XD extended capacity cards, which can be a maximum size of up to two terabytes. And beyond two terabytes, we now have the SDUC ultra capacity cards, which hold an amazing 128 terabytes per card. The other thing about the file system on the SDHC cards is that you cannot record files longer than 4 GBs at any one time. So if you are recording video, for example, and the video size goes beyond 4 GBs, those files will be split into separate files that you have to put together when you're editing to make one file. For the purposes of this video, we are going to be mainly focusing on the SDHC cards and the SDXC cards. When you're choosing the capacity of card to buy, there are two things to consider. One is that some devices have a limit to the size of card that they can use. So you need to make sure that you consult your manual for your device to make sure that you don't buy cards that are too big for your device to use. The second thing you need to consider is what you are going to be using those cards for. If you are going to be using your cards in an audio recorder, for example, you really don't need a big cards in audio recorders because audio files are not that big. So for example, in my audio recorder, which is a Zoom H6, I use an eight gigabyte uh, card and that's sufficient for most of the audio recording that I need to do. I would say for general photography, the capacity of the card is a more important metric to use when you're choosing your cards. But this changes when you are involved in things like sports photography where you shoot in burst mode. Burst mode is when you press the shutter and your camera takes multiple photos in quick succession until you release the shutter. In that case, then capacity and speed become very important 
I personally would prioritize the speed over the capacity, but both in that case are very important because for any one subject that you're taking a photo of in action photography, you're going to be taking dozens of photos from which you'll choose maybe just one. But you're also taking those photos in quick succession and that requires a card that is fast enough to be able to write to the card as quickly as you are taking the photos. So we've talked about physical format and we've talked about capacity. Now let's go on to talking about speed. When we talk about speed, you need to understand the difference between the write speed of your card and the read speed of your card. Let us begin by talking about the read speed of your card. When you look at the SD card, you will see a number there that's written uh, in megabytes per second. So for this card, it says 150 megabytes per second. And it also has something written there, 1000X. Even though those two numbers are the most prominent on your card when you look at it, they are probably not the most useful. And this is because the read speed, this is the read speed on your card, refers to the speed at which you can offload data from the card onto your computer. So after you've recorded something on an SD card and you stick it in an SD card reader and you copy the files onto your computer, this is the rate, the maximum rate at which that data can be offloaded. Remember, this is the maximum read rate. What that affects then is the amount of time it takes you to copy files off your SD card. That's the read speed. The actual read speed that you can attain with these cards will depend on three things. One, the card itself, the brand. The second thing is your card reader. That also affects how much data can be transferred off the card. And the third thing is the USB port that you have that card reader plugged into. So you might have 150 megabytes per second rated card, but when you stick it into a card reader that can't read at that speed, then you are not going to achieve the speed that's written on this card. Now the other number that's there, 1000X, is put on some cards, not all brands put these numbers there. This number, 1000X, actually refers to or compares the speed of this card to a CD writer speed, the speed at which you can write data onto a writable CD disk. Now that we understand that the figure on the card that you see is actually the read speed, we want to talk about the more important speed for your card, the speed that you're going to probably use to choose which card to buy, and that is the write speed. And the write speed is how fast data can be written or how much data can be written onto the card when you're recording with a camera per second. And that is uh, again rated in megabytes per second. This is where things start getting a little bit tricky. There are three speed classes that you will find written on your SD cards and we need to decode those three speed classes so that you understand what they mean. Again, when SD cards first came out, the first speed class that was defined was simply named speed class. And when you look at your card, you will see a number with a C around it. So there's a C and a number inside that C. That is your speed class. And there are four speed classes, two, four, six, and 10. So when you look at your card, it will either have a two, a four, a six, or a 10 surrounded by a C. And what that means is that is the minimum write speed of your card. The two stands for two megabytes per second, four megabytes per second, 6 megabytes per second and 10 megabytes per second. Minimum write speed. With that said, these days you hardly find any cards below 10. So 2, 4 and 6, you hardly find those cards on the market. 
and if you do find them i would recommend that you just stay away from them because with the devices that we have now and the formats that we record to two four and six are too slow for those purposes so when you are looking for a card just look for class 10 cards the next generation in speed class is called the uhs speed class and there are two uhs speed classes and you will see them on your card as a one or a three contained in a u so you will see a u with a one or a u with a three the u with a one means a minimum write speed of 10 megabytes per second so that will be like the same for the speed class c10 so if you see a c with a 10 and a u with a 1 they both mean minimum write speed of 10 megabytes per second the difference comes with the maximum write speed so even though they have the same minimum write speeds the UHS cards will have a maximum write speed that is beyond that of the speed class cards. The next speed class after the UHS speed class is called the video speed class. And in the video speed class, you have five categories. You have the V6, V10, V30, V60 and V90 cards each corresponding to a faster speed. Just like the other classes that we talked about, the number after the V uh, talks about the minimum write speed of that card. So if you see V30 on the card, that means a minimum write speed of 30 megabytes per second. In practical terms, what you really want to do is to look at cards that have the UHS and video class rating especially if you're going to be using them for video the v class rating is especially important if you are working with very high definition video then you want to look at the v rating of your card or the video class rating of your card for other general use uhs rating one and three are perfectly okay you can be technical about this and actually calculate for yourself what the megabytes per second write speed is for whatever format you're going to be using. When you read the operational manual of most cameras, you will find the different formats of video like 2K and 4K and they'll tell you the data that is recorded per second when you are switched to that format. Now the confusing thing about this is the data rating of video recording that you get is measured in megabits per second. So megabits with a small b. But the cards that you're going to be using, the SD cards, have a rating that is measured in megabytes per second, which is a big b. And so megabytes are bigger than megabits. In fact, one megabyte is equal to eight megabits. So when you are trying to calculate your own needs, if you are that technical, then you have to make sure that you make that conversion. So when you see a recording format that says, I don't know, uh, this recording format will record at 100 megabits per second, then you need to convert that to megabytes per second and match that with the card that you're going to need. Before we move from the speed of the cards, one thing you have to make sure you do whenever you start recording is format your card. The speed rating that is given is what is called sequential write speed. What that means is your card is not fragmented. In computer terms, fragmentation happens when you delete files of your card and so when your device is trying to write information to your card, it has to jump around to find empty blocks of disk space. And so you won't be able to take full advantage of the write speed that is written on your card. So that's one of the reasons why it's always advised that you format your card so that you take full advantage of the write speed of your card because the recording will be sequential. 
The last piece of information that you'll find on the card that can be a little confusing is a Roman numeral one, two or three that you'll find on your card. As at the time of this recording, you will probably encounter only Roman numeral one and two. That Roman numeral one or two refers to the UHS bus system. Don't confuse this with the UHS speed class. These are related but different. In simple terms, the UHS bus system is referring to how the data is moved to and from the card. And so it affects your write and read speed. With UHS one, you have one row of pins on the card. So those pins are the ones that um, affect the transfer of data to and from the card. With UHS two and beyond, you have two rows of pins at the back of the card. That significantly increases the maximum write and read speed of the card. With UHS one cards, you get data transfers of up to 104 megabytes per second. With uh, UHS two cards, you get maximum data transfers of up to 312 megabytes per second. And with the UHS three cards, that figure goes up to 624 megabytes per second. Now they're looking at data transfers in the express cards of up to four gigabytes per second, but it comes at a cost. So these uh, cards with two pins at the back are much more expensive than the ones with just the one pin. The downside is that not all devices can actually use that second row of pins. So it might not actually be worth it to invest in these very high speed cards if one, your device uh, cannot read those cards and then secondly if you actually don't need that speed in the first place More and more SD cards now have an additional speed class added to the cards and this is called the performance application speed class This is currently not relevant to video production or photography Devices like smartphones these days can now run apps directly off SD cards instead of on the phone itself so there was a need to develop cards that would be able to manage applications that are loaded onto SD cards. The A1 and A2 speed classes refer to how fast and how efficiently the card can run the input and output operations of an app that is installed on an SD card. The speed class is measured in input and output operations per second. To summarize, I would say if you can afford it as a bare minimum, invest in SDXC cards, UHS Speed 3, and Bus Interface 1, that's the Roman numeral. This should cover most, if not all, the needs of a beginner photographer and someone who's just doing basic video work. If you want to take advantage of the read speed on the cards, then also make sure you invest in a good card reader. And finally, I would also recommend that you invest in the cheaper SD uh, HC cards for quick jobs that you need to do that don't require very high speeds. And there you are, an introduction to SD cards. I hope you have learned something and it will help you as you choose the cards that you will use in your devices. I will put uh, links in the description to resources that you can go to if you want to know a little bit more about SD cards in detail and also the resources that I use for some of the graphics that you will see or that you have seen in this video. See you next time on Tech Booth.